Because there's lots of autographs on it already. <laughs> Touche! Look. When somebody tosses you a fat pitch, you hit the fat pitch. Yeah. Now, is the woman who has Connor Trenier Ted? Say it again. <laughs> we're, we're actors. A heckler. A heckler. Because yeah. mine was the last one. Can we just have wow, we have set the bar down. high. Beautiful. So this, uh, this was, by the way, called elevated discourse with the crew of the Enterprise. Yes. Yes. Right. Star Trek, the sophisticated show that it is about history and legacies. Autograph. Moderate, moderate away, thank Chase. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. All right. So, um. I just have to ask, is the woman who has Connor Trenier tattooed on her back here because security? No? No, okay. no, I'll, I'll okay. buy you a drink if you're here. Okay. Or if you get me autographed on your back on our next port of call, I'll also buy you a drink. Okay. Yeah. Or Ladies, on your arm yes. or some other body part. You yes. gotta show it to me. Ladies I'll buy and you gentlemen, my time. line up. Do not get this man tattooed on your body. Did you hear me? All right. Cause y'all gotta go back home with whoever you go home with. He's going home with his lady. Don't do that to yourselves. Like, I love him. I, these guys are my brothers. Okay, Somebody never uh, putting them anywhere on my body. Yeah, yeah, that's Somebody, not good for dating. Really. Somebody tried to tattoo uh, me on their body, but they had to bring another person in to <laughs> make it a couple's tattoo. Okay. I one think person from here and one person down there. And, oh. I get it. Oh, and then a third person. I wasn't thinking that. That was more of a fat joke. But if you want to make, make, make it, I want to go there. You want to make I it a dick these joke. people. They're the ones with the dirty minds. I have. No it's no. a cruise, and everybody's been drinking. It's fair. It's fair. So okay. some cheers. It's fair. All right. We apologize to the person who that offended. There's got to be. No, we here. don't. What? what are you talking about? All right. So seriously, I think you guys are here to be, hear about Star Trek. Yay! All right, guys. I had a set of, of uh, very intelligent questions for you, so... Throw them out the window. <laughs> you rehearsed this, right? Oh, okay. yeah. All, yeah. This is the, off the, the whole way problem. here. The whole, every step since I left my room, I've rehearsed this. So, um, starting with you, John Billingsley, you have been a consummate actor. Are you sure you want to do that, Chase? Yes. All right, starting with you, Anthony Montgomery. <laughs> no, um, no. Put him on the hot seat. Let's you, go. I, I, I'll ask each of you in succession. You must have had many friends who were actors on these show, Anthony, including me, because we had the same manager. Interesting, it's, Hollywood is a very small town. But I digress. Did you guys hear about the, the workings of the Star Trek shows and what the entire experience was like? Had you heard that from the inside? And was this a show that you aimed to be on because of that? Or what was your previous experience with Star Trek before getting cast in Enterprise? I did not know anybody who worked on the Trek shows. I didn't even know we had the same representation until much later. So no, I had no idea. I knew what Star Trek was. Everybody in the world knows what Star Trek is, even if you don't watch it, even if you don't know what the series are, except for the people that keep thinking I was on Discovery because I was not. <laughs> Just for the record, look at look at my face. I was not on Discovery. I know nothing about whatever this cat fetish is with the man who was on Discovery. So everybody can stop coming up to me going, do you really like cats? I mean, they're cool, but I'm a dog. I'm not that guy. I was on Enterprise, not Discovery. I was Travis. I don't even know what that guy's name, his character is. He seems like a nice guy. He's just, he's just not me, baby. Listen to what I'm saying. I had a woman come in town and we got into a whole conversation about how well, no, it is you. No, woman, I know what show I was on. What in the nuclear fission is happening right now? No, I am the other dark meat. All black men do not look the same. You are never one time, not 
once will you ever confuse Connor Trenier with Bob Picardo. Never once. Never once. Well, in fairness, I get confused with Johnny Ethan Phillips all the fucking time. Listen. Got it. Because Anthony. you know what? All aliens look alike, Anthony. Apparently. Apparently. Black alien. I was human, damn it. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought you were great on Discovery, though. I thought, I mean, I thought you were really, really good. Welcome to the Men of Enterprise, What was that? Oh, I had no idea what this cruise was gonna be. This is, this is your very solemn 20th anniversary challenge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just be glad Dominic's not here. Oh, oh no. my sake. You, you guys know Dominic, yes. This boat would be drunk dry by now, let me tell you. There would be no alcohol for the rest of you. I loved this series. I didn't know. I knew what Star Trek was. I didn't know what my life was going to become. But I knew there were a legion of fans around the world who were going to love me until my dying None of them could be here this week, but... <laughs> well, I mean, a couple of their cousins are here. You know, I mean, this is definitely a family reunion, so that's literally, that's the answer to your question. I knew, but I didn't know. Good answer. Good answer. Connor Trevier, Mr. Tripp, talk to us. So, uh, my brother and his cronies would walk around the perimeter of the schoolyard and uh, have a back and forth about what the previous day's original series episode was. So I, was, I would watch the original series when I got home from school, and then Perry Mason, <laughs> right? On the uh, local access channel, because of course my parents would never have cable. Uh, when I got the audition for Enterprise, it was one of those days during pilot season where I had three appointments. And back in the day, you couldn't just download it from your email. You had to drive to your agency. Those office. days are gone. Yeah. Not for you, maybe. But... Uh, no, those are gone. Yeah, I was trying to be nice. Uh, and so I had three auditions, and I had like 26 pages of, of, of dialogue to learn. And uh, I didn't work on Enterprise. I was like, I, I don't know, That's, for some reason, I just didn't do it. If you know me at all, eh, you might understand that that's something I would do. But, so I, I, I learned the other two. I had my, that's also because the Enterprise audition was in the afternoon. And uh, I did the other two. Obviously, those shows didn't go anywhere. I prepared for them. Came in and uh, auditioned for Enterprise. Ron Surma. Ron What are you gonna read for us today? And so I sat down and literally punted on third down. I had the worst audition I've ever had in my life. We'll take him! Yeah, <laughs> seriously. I don't know. There's something about him. There's something about him, maybe. So they sent me out to my car for an hour to learn my audition. <laughs> hey, why don't you go practice for a little bit yeah. and come back here? <laughs> Listen, Connor, we think you're great, but that was terrible. <laughs> Yeah, they did. Why, why didn't you work on it? Did you know it was Star Trek Enterprise, or were they... Yeah, but I, 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 I mean, I knew nothing about it. I knew nothing about it. And then, but, when they called back and said, we want to see him again, I said, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, then I really, really wanted it. Yeah. And it took me six more auditions to get it. He earned this, y'all. He's here because he's supposed to be your commander, Trip Tucker. They wanted somebody else and somebody else and somebody else, and I kept showing up and knocking on the door, and they were like, well, okay, him. Nice. It's, and it's been a long road. Getting from there to here. See what you did? I see what you did there. Yeah, I have to give credit to the front row on that one. All right, so John Billingsley, I know you have no other friends that are actors, but... Present company excluded? No, not even. But, um, <laughs> tell us your previous experience with Star Trek. I didn't really have a ton of experience with Star Trek. I was six when the show premiered in 1966. I was a little too young to watch it. I wa are you applauding because I was six in 1966? <laughs> I love people who applauded anything. I ate a cracker. Yeah! <laughs> You guys 
just went to an ugly place. <laughs> All of you that did that, that is not what I was saying. I was talking about the saltines, you fuckers. <laughs> y'all know what y'all were doing just now. Don't try to pull me into that because you think I'm the other black dude. Don't, that's, that's not my shit, people. I was going on his I love crackers joke. That's where that was. And you were so good on Discovery. <laughs> I mean... So, anyway... Um, I was not that familiar with the show. I got the audition. And since Connor told his audition story, some of you may have heard this because I've been dining off this story for 20 years. Um, they don't give you the whole script. They just give you a couple of scenes at least in this instance. And the scene I got, they said one thing. They said, come in with a slight alien accent. <laughs> what, the, what does that mean? What is that? Well, that was my question. So my wife and I practiced various accents, and my wife said, shitty, 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 <laughs> until one, which basically was me squawking like a bird. <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> For some reason, my wife said, I like that. <laughs> Probably because she wanted to fuck me up. <laughs> but I went into the audition and I went, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I got the job. <laughs> they didn't make me audition six times, they just offered me the job. So I was pretty sure going into the very first day, I was a bird. <laughs> They didn't dress me like a bird. They didn't put bird makeup on me. Nobody said I was a bird. Nobody gave me any backstory. But they hired me and I squawked, so I was pretty sure I was a fucking bird. <laughs> so the first scene where I had caused to squawk, the, the director, Jim Conway, I went blah, 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 blah. And Jim Conway said, quit fucking around, John. <laughs> Which is how I knew I was not a bird. <laughs> the show much? <laughs> wow. Okay. So... What's your just... next serious question? Right. <laughs> you set this up. We love you, Chase, by What's the way. What's your next serious line? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I didn't do it. But... Try, try that again. One more time. Give us one more. <laughs> no. No. It's, else... it's not easy to squawk. Okay. Somebody else... That's your cousin. Chase, Chase, get, get, get to the next question. Get to the next question. Right, okay. So All the Denobulans are in the front row. So you guys are... You guys are a fun cast. And yes, we fun. are. Yes, you and are. And it was a good show when it was on. Yes. For any of the people that didn't tune in from 2001 to 2005, you missed out on it. Damn it, yeah, okay. Wait, wait, Bring it what? back, you know. You said kerplock. What? No, they're, they're, they're suggesting it might come back. <laughs> you what? There is, a, there is a show in the works called Old Fat Flux. <laughs> Get the flux out of here. Lane. Where Old Fat Flux sits like in a rocking chair at the beginning of each episode, and he goes... <laughs> reminds me of a time when I was on a starship. And then there's like flashback music and a bunch of young handsome actors run around in their underwear for about 45 minutes. Nobody told me about this show. And then it comes back to me at the end and I say, next week I'll tell you more. And I'm number one on the call sheet, get paid a shitload of money, but only have to work half a day. Excellent. How did, how did that pitch go? It, it, nobody's taken to it yet, no. but I, I sense enthusiasm among... <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. You, it's the same enthusiasm that gets excited when you say, I love crackers. I do love crackers! Could I, could I please moderate the discovery panel? We've been <laughs> waiting on you two! I don't know what the holdup is! Oh, hold up. Okay, so, so speaking of underwear, Trip. <laughs> This would be a good time if you
if you have panties to hurl them on the stage. There you go. I'm talking to you, sir. <laughs> That or, or, or dollar bills, you can just make it rain. Or depends for those of you who watched the show in real time in the early 2000s. Oh, see, see, and that's when they turned on her. Mm -hmm. It was all going so well. It was Chase. going great. Our first boo. Thanks, Chase. Don't how was, how, how was the show, cruise, Chase? It was great until about Monday show, morning. You guys show was two shows after me, okay? So what am I talking about? Back to you on the underwear, Connor. You're trying to change, you get out of trying that. To change the subject? No, I'm not, but I, I'm waiting for a question. Okay. In you just want to know if he wears underwear? Because he does, I'm guessing. <laughs> Sometimes. Like I think everybody. You pull a JT on us and show us your underwear. No, 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 I don't want to see it. Do you, do you, you want to see my underwear? No, 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 Travis says no, 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 sweet Jesus, no, sweet Jesus, no. It's yes. only 1.52. That's true. <laughs> what are Let's we wait do? till 2.28. Okay. Because that'll be a short enough uh, period so, of time. Yeah, so I can run out okay. and get some. Right, right. Now, Boom. but the only thing is to make that a really good scene, we'd have to have a woman willing to play And Jolie. why do you guys keep standing up and, and running around? Well, I'm, trying, I'm trying to run away in case you get up and do it. I just really we, don't want to see. We okay, would have then, to have... All right, I'm going to... We'd have to have a woman who is willing to step in and play to Paul, and I don't think there's anybody out there, is there? Really? That Denobulan right. chick in the front row had her hand up. She, yeah, she'll play She's anybody. She's fucking like Dr. Fox. That's a pair. That's a duo. Anyway, Connor, these are sensitive scenes that everyone wants to know how these things are shot and what it's like being up behind the scenes as an actor on one of these... Uh, Incredibly um, warm. This is a painful question you're asking right now. I'm like, is she, what are you trying I, to say? I, I think what you're, I know what you're getting at. I, I do too. Yeah. I'm, just trying, right. I'm just trying to make her turn red. Right. 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 So how was it hot tubbing with Jolie and Blaylock? There you go. Just ask the question. Hot tubbing with Jolie and Blaylock? So okay, I will tell you what it's like. I will tell you what it's like to have a scene like that. And no, I will, she I, was very gassy. <laughs> right. <laughs> A lot of broccoli in her diet. So uh, I will I will describe the scene that we shot in the pilot where we you know rub each other down. It ain't gonna be that sexy, you guys. I'm sorry. It never is. So you do it for I don't know five hours, and every time. So we had they spent. Well, you and I were on set doing a scene in the pilot when they had these two kind of like adult model actors over there on the corner, they had lights on them and they were <laughs> rubbing stuff all over each other shirtless. They were both shirtless and Anthony and I are like, what kind of show is this? <laughs> like, I'm like, I thought this was Star Trek. This is supposed to be wholesome. And I'm not kidding. Every single executive that could have been part of the show was there <laughs> watching this. So they're doing the whole thing and did we saunter over and take, did we saunter over? We, we, we walked we walked that direction and, 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 and yes. there were a couple of very fit people shirtless covered in uh, oil so the one they decided to use had glitter in it okay some of you get this so every time we did a take that we had glitter gel put on us after you said cut they had to bring a dry towel and scrape it off oh, that's not that's not sexy folks. that's not sexy that's not hot at no. all that's a skin irritant. <laughs> so the other thing that was awful was that you're doing this sort of intimate scene, but imagine behind the camera, there's 30 people who were like, <laughs> I, can we fix that? <laughs> Would you get over there and, and you're like, oh my God, you're naked basically, trying to do a scene, trying to stay connected, and you've got a whole 
shooting gallery back there going, I don't, I don't like this. I, I think we've got to fix something about this. So wow. it's, um, it's not, it's not porn. These okay. are problems. These are problems I have never had. So here's a question. Yeah. You just automatically work with your own glitter gel, right? You bring your own. You'll be surprised to hear that executives have not tended to want to see me naked rubbing anything on anybody. <laughs> okay. I'm shocked. Shocked, I tell you. So, another question for serious now. How was it working with Jolene? Oh, it's great. Um, Jolene, yeah. uh, she showed up on point. Um, I think that she had one of, next to John, one of the more difficult roles to play. I mean, it's such a yeah. difficult prospect to come in and try to tell story and further it along when you're restricted by emotions and I, you know you have to really play the nuances and I thought that she did a really really good job as a denobula yeah uh, uh, she was fantastic okay and, and I, I would add one thing is that in a way I think she had the most demanding intricate arc of all of all of us in terms of, of the journey she took in that show I died I just want to put that up. <laughs> but you didn't die of like some long, lingering, wasting disease. No one knew, but I had, that was my story. I had, yeah, I never got promoted, so I don't want to hear anything from either of you fuckers. Okay, well, well you saw what I did. But you're not dead. It's true, there's hope for you to be on Discovery. Hi, sir. Hi, <laughs> sir. Y'all saw Enterprise, right? Y'all know the character I'm talking about. Okay. Go ahead. Next question. So, so much of the the cast dynamics on set, which leads to great conversations like this, are, is about the interaction of the cast in real time. You guys seem so amiable, and you are. I mean, each individually and together, you've got a great fun dynamic. How was that cultivated on set? Were there any intercast squabbles? Or uh, was that largely led? Seriously, there, a lot of times that, no. that's led. No. But a lot of times that's led, or, or or sometimes the set dynamic can be cultivated by the person who's number one on the call sheet. For instance, I hear that Sonequa is great about that, and I can see that cast really works together beautifully on screen and off. How was that? Scott. Enterprise? Scott. Scott is a champion. Absolutely. And anybody back anybody in. who's ever been on a TV show or guested on a TV show, you know almost immediately whether number one, number one listed on the cast sheet, is either raising the bar or lowering the bar for bad behavior. Or poisoning it. Yeah, or poisoning the well. Scott lifted the bar every day. He knew everybody's name. Every day. Every, extra. every single day. So <laughs> consequently, the rest of us really had to work to lower that fucking bar. <laughs> Kudos to you, John, really. <laughs> well, if John had been there more often, he might have been able to. Right. <laughs> Let me sing you my little song. A song I wrote to celebrate the fact I didn't have much to do on the show. Day off. Day off. Six days off and the check still come. <laughs> laughing about that song since 2001. That shit is hilarious. Every time. Wow, that's we, pretty good. We loved being on set together because we weren't able to do it very much. So those times where you saw the seven of us out there, for me, were the best times on set because it was so rare. Maybe a handful of times over the 98 episodes. This is the love, the energy that you guys see. We don't just put it on when we're on stage. Did people fight? Yes, because that happens in any family, but we absolutely love each other. So what you guys see on it's screen clear. and yeah. see here is who we actually are. That's pretty awesome. Of course, we're also fucking good actors, so that could be complete bullshit. <laughs> You see what happens? I try to give you like some real, and then my asshole brother does that. <laughs> so it's family. That's what fuck I'm saying. Fuck you, Charlie. Fuck you. Uh, you, fuck Johnny. Jesus. I'm the middle child. I seem to be all right. <laughs> uh, apparently, I've adjusted well. Oh my God. 
Yes, welcome yeah, to our wow. world. Wow. She doesn't even know what to say. She's never done this with the three of us, so she didn't know what she No, was I don't for. think anyone would twice. Hey guys, in, tw <laughs> in 28 minutes, we know what's going to happen. Exactly. What was okay. that? You and me leaving the stage. Yeah, well, you know. That's what John's like, going to show his underwear, right? Unless you'd like to go first. So, uh, speaking of deeply intense Star Trek moments, um, tell me each of you, because I really want to give them some good info, some, some real stuff. What are your favorite moments each from on screen and your favorite off screen moments from the show? Beginning with the, the first time you got notified that you were in, till now, what are your favorite moments that have happened both on screen and off? So I can't give you guys all of those um, because honestly, over the uh, pandemic, I wrote a book. I wrote my autobiography, it's called Surviving My Life, and I dedicate a chapter to Trek, my Trek life. Um, so when you guys get the book, the questions that you ask, I had to take my time and actually sit and answer that question for myself because I'm a kid from Indiana who just went out to California and made good on a promise to my family. And then you guys brought me into something that has changed my world and it continues to change every single day. We got fired from our jobs 15 years ago and you guys brought us here to tell us how much you love us. So for me, it's a little different. I, you know, like I love you guys, and again, you'll you'll read about all of this uh, when the book comes. It's being edited. It'll done. It'll be done being edited by the time we. Twenty nine ninety five in hardcover. So wait for the paper. Nah, nah, nah. I don't even know how much it's gonna be. Like I can't take pre orders or anything because I just finished it. But that is a very real question that I had to ask that I figured our fans around the world are going to want to know. So I'll tell you, it's, you know, you guys, I love you guys a lot, truly. Thank you. Thank you for loving me and embracing, embracing me and loving us. Thank you. And I hope you're clapping for yourselves because you deserve it, really, truly. The best audience any actor could ever ask for. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We, we can't all be the best. That's not true. Yes, we all can individually. Hey, Connor, you're the best. Get on with it. I'm number one. I'm, I'm number one, right? Okay. In your hearts and minds. I will say this about um, on-set memories. Um, and they came really after having completed the show, is that uh, I have found myself in an environment like this, that is around the world, on the seas, that is uh, uh, about love and acceptance and, and be who you are and be good. And I take great pride in the fact that I was involved in a show that had that ethos. And, um, you know, it's given back to me over and over and over again, year after year. It, it is one, it was the role of a lifetime, and two, it has been and continues to be the experience of a lifetime. So thank you all for um, really letting this happen. Um, it's all about you. Yeah. And, uh, it is. He's not just saying that. This is about you guys. So I, I kind of think I did a little tricky thing there. I made it sort of uh, the show experience yeah, gonna, and post-show experience. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I, I wrapped yeah, that up a yeah. little bit. I like the hecklers. <laughs> I waited my whole fucking life to have a heckler. <laughs> Particularly one that would allow me to shave his pubic area. <laughs> this may be the highlight right now. Or later on, say four. <laughs> Five, fine. Um, I'll attempt a serious answer. I haven't really given a serious answer in 21 years, so, but I'll attempt one. Um, there were episodes of Star Trek Enterprise that I thought really did what the show has successfully done for 60-something years, which is to talk about issues of the interrelationship of science and ethics 
in a way that was really compelling and that allowed you to understand all aspects of certain challenges we face as a species in a world. The one that comes to mind to me is the one where we cloned Trip. Um, I thought that episode, and similarly to what Anthony suggested, it used all of us. We all had an emotional investment. It was high stakes. There was a lot going on. It had a lot to say about the ethics of biomedical research. And to me, that was that show at its best. And I have very, very fond memories, except for the fact I dropped the fucking baby. <laughs> Apparently, you drop a baby one time, <laughs> never goes it lives away, with you. and you're known as the goddamn baby dropper. <laughs> but other than that small blemish, I thought that episode was really uh, the quintessence of what Star Trek does well, and it's a very fond memory of mine. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Grandpa. Ninety percent serious. Um, okay, right. With a sous-son of not so serious. You got it, exactly. Man. You got it. Nice. exactly. I did not really drop the baby. I caught the baby right before it hit the. Good. It was I'm... a scary moment. It was. Oh my God. Was um, it baby me? Go no, no, no. Remember they had the yeah, it was baby you. It was baby me. John. There were, there was a, a woman who, Thank you for saving me, John. There was a woman who had like, you know, her two little babies. And and they made me carry the baby. It's like it's a slippery little fucker and I was losing my purchase and, and I I you know, I, I managed to hold on to it. But I did have a scary moment when I thought this will probably be the end of my career. <laughs> So is that what happened to you, Connor? I see. All right. That, yeah. Hold right, on, no, man. No, seriously, going back in this direction, I love you guys. You know it. Keep so, coming at my brother over no, here. No, 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 no. All so, right, Chase. Oh. Now, hey, on, Chase. listen. That wasn't the first time I was dropped, by the way. I've been, I've been dropped a few times. Okay. Um, not by women, though. Um, going back in this direction, in this... So, Connor, give us an example of one of those episodes for you, something that really embodies the heart of Star Trek, the, the creating of a better future. Um, well, uh, definitely similitude. One of my favorites was an episode where I had felt that Trip put his foot in his mouth all the time and never had to pay a price for it. There was no real consequence. And I actually said this to them. them. And uh, they wrote this episode called Cogenitor, where he gets involved, yeah, he gets involved in um, this, she was a surrogate for another um, alien couple and had no rights, no anything. And I tried to save her and couldn't. And she wound up uh, committing suicide, I believe, uh, at the end of the episode. And I thought that, um, that was one very good storytelling, and I also thought it, 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 it addressed a lot of issues. One in particular about, you know, what role do you play when you go out and explore or meet people or have an influence? And, and I thought that that episode, it needed to be done because otherwise Trip was gonna just keep putting his foot in his mouth and going, dur, 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 you know, and back to the shit. But, you know, it, I weighed heavily upon him. And, and I think it, it was lasting. That's a, good, that's a good point. Consequences, results of our actions. It's a good thing to discuss. Anthony, what was a, an episode or even a moment uh, or a story arc that you felt like embodied what Roddenberry meant for this show in Enterprise? Or if there's another one from another show, feel free to chime out. There is not. Perry, no, 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 no. Only from Enterprise, no. these episodes, no. right. Perry Mason, episode number 600. Hopefully um, from start, so you were watching TV with Connor. Okay, Anthony. I'm uh, maybe detained. Do you guys remember detained? I think that was when they were in the internment camp. Sulaban internment camp with Archer 
and Travis. It was uh, one of the few that Travis got to actually get up there and do something because they, despite all of the oppression that the Suleban had faced, they were ultimately encouraged to stand up for themselves and to take their lives, their existence in their own hands. Am I, am I remembering this right? Yeah. So with where our world is, with where our world has been, that one stands out because I think everybody is in the space of we need to fight for our existence. We don't, we shouldn't have to, but sometimes uh, outside forces put you in a place. That's not something I can joke about because you guys know what's going on in our real world. But when you ask me one that actually hits me, well, as a black man, I'm not even going to go into that one because the oppression that we're seeing is not just about black or white. So um, anytime people have to stand up and fight to just be able to be, those are the ones that will stand out for me, and you guys know the show a hell of a lot better than I do, but I think y'all know what I'm talking about. Thank you, Anthony. So along those lines, what is the most important thing for you each that has come about as a result of Star Trek from the beginning? Uh, from from the very first episode of TOS, what's what's the most important thing for society, for the real world that Star Trek has brought about, and what do you hope will come in the future as a result of Star Trek? Well, actually, I actually really do have a serious answer. I can't believe this. Twenty one years. Um, you know, I I do a lot of work in the community with people who are experiencing homelessness and people. Who are <laughs> Uh, I helped to run an organization called the Hollywood Food Coalition, and one of the reasons I got involved in that work is because, uh, like Anthony, I too have been very upset at the drift in our country away from those things that I think Star Trek stands for. Community, tolerance, coming together to work for a perfectible world. There's no such thing as perfect, but there's aspiration. And I think the key to actually achieving Roddenberry's vision is to ask people to identify their volunteer bliss. For people to get involved in the world in ways that are creative and make a difference. And that's everybody, and, and I have no doubt that probably most people here, because the Star Trek community is a very special community, already do that. It's in us to give more to help people in need in all sorts of ways. If you're a teacher, if you're a mentor, if you're a volunteer in your community, there are ways to give back. And in the end, I believe, although I'm not a religious person, the line from the gospel that says, brighten the corner where you are, is the thing to me that makes Star Trek theoretically achievable. Yeah. 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 And, and, uh, Fantastic answer. I don't have a lot to add to that. I completely agree with it. It's, it's be your best self. Be the best self that you are. And to echo your charity, and we haven't lived this for quite a while, is be kind. Be kind to one another. You know, we've had several years where, where being kind or being nice or being seemingly good got tossed out the window and it was poison. I think it's poisonous for us. I think that it, to move forward, look in the mirror, be a good person, be kind. And I don't, to be kind, I don't have to tolerate you. Guys, you know the difference in tolerating and accepting, right? I, you're, you're not tolerating me for being black. You are accepting that I am not you. There's a difference. There's a difference. So, like John said, everybody in here already subscribes to what we know Gene's vision is for each of us. And I'm sure each of you in your own way 
are brightening the world and then we come together and do something like this. But for all of those people out there who see and feel this dark gloom looming and they are fine with it, those are the hearts and the spirits that need to be opened up because you guys already have it. I've never, I've never felt more embraced by people that have no idea about me than in being a part of the Star Trek family. And I mean that. I, I never would have thought it possible. Never. Coming from where I come from, the Klan and the United States came to prominence in my hometown. So coming where I come from, I never thought that it would happen to me. I just, I knew it was possible because I knew that's what Trek represented. So. I, like my brothers, I'm just, I'm proud to be a part of it. And in my own way, I plan to brighten this world a little bit by my artistic creations and givings. And hopefully that will help shine a light and we'll all be moving toward, you know, Gene's vision of the future. Amen. I'm so heartened by where Star Trek is going because it's it's not just a tolerating or or an accepting, but it's an upholding, actively cherishing the right of everyone to be exactly who they are in all of their glory and all of their all of our colors, all of our genders, all of our abilities, all of our disabilities, all of our preferences, everything. Everybody has a right to be who they are, and we have the ability to empathize with that and count everyone as beautifully equal. Not just have representation of color on the screen, but to make her the captain, right? And I'll just say briefly, thank you each for being a part of the Be Kind campaign and the coalition's work. And this is what these shirts available in the gift shop are, are, are creating, seriously, that this is the, the active creating of Roddenberry's world, really working to make that happen. So, John, I want to say huge congratulations for the work that you are doing with the Hollywood Food Coalition, and I don't know if you know, but Trek Talks recently um, raised $70,000, or $80,000, $80, $80, $80, $80, um, with, a, with a large grant by Roddenberry Foundation for Hollywood Food Coalition, for people who don't have what we and, have. And I can announce publicly from this stage, there will be a Trek Talks 2. And Brent Spiner sent me an email afterwards saying, how come I wasn't invited? To which I said, if you answered your fucking emails. So next year, Brent Spiner is gonna have a whole panel to himself. I, I, I do want to go back there for a second. Who was the first person that responded to your email? Connor Trenier. In a wildly uncharacteristic way. Connor Trenier, who has a reputation as, send Connor an email and maybe he'll get to you in the next season. If you send him a fall email, you might get a winter response. First one to answer. Beautiful. It's all about the timing, isn't it? It is. Beautiful. Yeah. And since we all have LeVar Burton's phone number. I've been on that for 20 years. <laughs> no. um, this, is, this is really quite wonderful. Um, Nine minutes to heaven! <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got nine questions. Does anybody have a question? And yes, just keep your questions brief and yes, right over here. I hope this isn't an embarrassing question for either of Anthony or uh, This question is for Commander Trip Nip. Trip Nip? I don't, I'm not aware of who that is. In that episode after the embryo was transferred, how long did it take up for your original nipples to dry up? <laughs> Sometimes when I get emotional or stressed, I still leak a little. <laughs> I, I can't say it's ever dried all the way up, to be honest with you. Okay, we can never have a panel after the free drinks 
t-shirt party again, okay? All right, who else? Yes. Oh, yes. No fear of her going first. <laughs> so this question is also for Connor. How fuck sight? I, I, I hope it's not. Okay, okay, okay. I hope it's not too embarrassing. I hope not. But don't start with that. Exactly. I hope it's not too embarrassing. How responsible do you feel knowing that even killing you off couldn't bring Enterprise to seven seasons like the other series? Wow! Hold on! Nobody ever really, really dies in science fiction, do they? I mean, you're just, you're just mostly dead. Mostly dead. They already cloned me, so I could have come back. I mean, come on. I might have lasted a whole... Yeah, you're not dead in the novelizations. That's true. They brought and me you're back. certainly not dead in the fan fiction. <laughs> if you know what I mean. And I think you know what I mean. Okay, we've got six more minutes. Let's go quickly so we can get everybody in. Quick. One for each of you. Is it embarrassing? No, not to, not totally. So, each of you had the experience that not many of us have had. Each of you have your own action figure. I do! How much fun in what way have you had with your action figure? <laughs> because I let the cats play with it. And one of them batted it into a corner somewhere. I don't know where the fuck it is. We don't either know where your head is, John. So. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm closer to my um, Hallmark ornament than I am my action figure. We didn't all get one. But sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take a old trip off the Christmas tree. Walk under the mistletoe, and I'll, I have to make sure I take off the metal hook before I give my light little kiss on the lips. Is that the question that you were going for? Because if that's what you're asking, no, I don't sit and play with myself. Because it, it seems like that's where his question was going. Oh, it went there. Just look at look at little Travis and go, oh my. Well, come on now. What hey, about let me. What, I got a question for this guy. Do you have any of our action figures and what do you do with them? Exactly. Yeah. Let's bring it on back. Full circle. Look, all of them. All of them and yeah. everything. Oh my dear. Please, Sweet quickly, Jesus. someone else. I don't have anything as bad as that. No. I, want, I just want to know, did Porthos ever disrupt anything on the set? Well, we couldn't, we couldn't actually look or talk to those Prada and Breezy, they were, they must have been, they were like Tom Cruise, you couldn't talk to them, they had like a tunnel going to their trailer, literally, no, they were, they were focused, they were I, had, I actually had a pretty good relationship with both Prada and Breezy, but maybe we shouldn't talk about that. <laughs> no, definitely not. Thank you, yes, quickly. Uh, don't touch it. Oh. <laughs> she, she keep grabbing his hand like, get your hand. I'm sorry. <laughs> Connor, I, as a native Floridian, and my lady and I are both native Floridians, I want you to thank you for legitimizing the stigma of the Florida man. <laughs> and making it okay. Because sometimes it's really not. The content of this panel notwithstanding. Well. I just want 
won't say thank you. I appreciate that. I, I feel very welcome in the state of Florida. Here's, a, here's funny though. Look, so uh, I maybe shouldn't tell this, but so when I got the job, you weren't told anything. Like, it's such minor descriptions of your character. It said good old Southern boy. That was it. So uh, I decided that he was sort of a, an engine nascar -y kind of wonderkin from Oklahoma. <laughs> we get about six months into the show, I'm from Florida. <laughs> and I said, I said, you, I'm not, I haven't been doing Florida. And they were like, ah, they'll never know. And I said, people in Florida will know. Our apologies, Florida. I didn't Great. realize, I thought I was from North Denobula. It turns out I was from South Denobula. <laughs> Oh, you're, so, you're from Pierre, South Denobula? I was like squawking in a whole fucking different kingdom. <laughs> oh dear, yes please. Okay. We get to see you together now, and you guys are chummy, and it's like you never saw, you never went without seeing each other. But in fact, what you did is created a universe for us, and a family, and an ethos, and all of that stuff. And there's no doubt that it was cut off short. There's no question. Yeah. I just love that show. I just thank you. did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We yeah, only well, created three sevenths of the universe, but what the hell? But what I'm getting at is that you see each other almost every single day. You get to chum around. Maybe you didn't have so many. You had a few, a few days you didn't have to work. But anyway, what I'm getting at is sort of you've created a family. And then all of a sudden, the word comes down that they didn't renew us. And I don't know how far in advance you guys found that out, but I'm wondering... Season did, one? <laughs> I'm just wondering, how did, how did it feel after you guys found out? How do you, you know, keep on working? And then how close do you guys stay together? How did it feel? How did it feel? Because he doesn't, he doesn't know acting, okay? This was a job. You understand? Like, I appreciate you, but I was unemployed when I auditioned for Enterprise. I got a really great job. And then we all got fired through no fault of our own. And then we were just unemployed again, so we went back out and started auditioning again. That's what happens for actors. How did it feel? It fucking sucked. Except we were like, we were supposed to do seven seasons except, and movies except, and everything. Except, 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 except. UPN, our network, was dying. Our ratings were bad. It was a miracle we got a season two, three, and four. No, Be because not I'm an optimist. But our ratings were still better than every other series and show on the network. On UPN. So we were still killing it. I, I get what you're saying. Yes, I'm the eternal optimist, and then there's John. So, no, 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 no. I am the optimist here. I'm saying glass half full. We got four years. We probably, in any other network, wouldn't have gotten two. Optimism. No, in any, any other network, they would have said, Every series before them. This is why Anthony and this Mark and I were allowed to do scenes together. <laughs> because he always wants to fucking bring it down. And I'm like, no, we're lifting it up, man. Be a realist, Anthony. Be a realist. No, I'm not. I'm going to be optimistic, and that's what it is. You are missing Connor taking his pants off so I can leave it. <laughs> Relations on the trip. 
<laughs> one, one more time. That's somebody's time. grandmother over there. Do you regret them not having sexual relations with your character baby? Why didn't Connor get it on with Mrs. Slot? <laughs> Because she was married to my buddy. <laughs> I was married to carte blanche. Do, do I regret what? I'm sorry. Do you regret not having sexual relations with Mrs. Black on the show? Do or you it? regret not having his wife cheat on him on the show? No, ma'am, I do not. I, 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 that's your real question. You're asking him. This I man know right here, and he regrets not being I'm an adult. Sorry, I asked. Right? Whose <laughs> man is this? This is somebody's grandma right now. Perhaps, as the show's, as the show's... This one has been trying so hard to ask her question, and I have a personal favor to ask her. Hold on, let him say his thing, and we'll get her question. Wait, 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 before we wrap, these people have been waiting so hard in line. This woman can ask her question now. Will you stay five extra minutes and answer these people's sure. questions? Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 say what he was saying, yes. I want you guys to get your questions answered so everybody can come over here when we're done, okay? Um, yes, ma'am, last question. So gosh, I am so sorry to ask another Connor question. I just gotta say, I out of all of my Star Trek crushes, he's the only one who hasn't turned into a grandpa on me, and it's like amazing. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was in my just bad ear. Will you tell that again? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, all the rest of them, man, they, 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 they're all grandpa status, but he's still got a few more good years in him, right? So, <laughs> so I guess yeah, he's a very lucky guy. So what everybody should have gotten from that is that she, John, hey, John and I are not her Star Trek crushes. Next question. She has a question. Yeah, she has a question. She has I a have question. A, a very, when you were impregnated, how did you not crack up every single scene? I, I, like, I almost shat my bed the other night and tried to pass out. This is so funny. She, she shat herself. Bartender. All right. Uh, I have, uh, a, I have a shameless plug for Connor. He is starring in a movie called The Baby Patch, which is going to be out in June. Yeah. And, and uh, it's a super fun movie, and I got, all, I got to be in it, too. That's right. So, uh, she is uh, so, uh, how did, how did and I now, crack up? And now I, I, I cracked up a lot, I have to say. Yeah, I'm a professional. Yeah, he's a professional. professional. He gets paid for this woman. Well, no, no, when you Sometimes. shoot, you gotta be a professional, too. Thank you. All right, we're gonna get thrown out of here, so in closing... No, we're not. Hold on, let me ask you, because she's been standing so sweetly. What's your question? No, no, Tessa. I think we all like to know who had the biggest cock on Enterprise. No, You already know the answer. Stop. He might not have had a lot of work to do, but he could do a lot of work. Don't, don't get it twisted. So in closing to this very serious Star Trek panel, I would like to offer the opportunity for Anthony and John to show us their underwear, okay? That's what I'd like to offer. All together now. I'm about to drop my drawers in this place. Stop! Stop! I am not John, and I am much more hung than he is. This whole room get dark, I pull my pants down. What are we doing? What are we doing in here? This is supposed to be a family show. I didn't even realize. I can't bring out the Alabama black snake. What? What are y'all talking about? Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the men of Star Trek. Enterprise!